If you're seeing pink at the beach at the U.S.-Mexico border, it's not your imagination. Researchers from Scripps Institution of Oceanography are conducting a novel experiment using pink dye to gauge water quality. Falk Federson, a project leader and Scripps professor, joins me to talk about the experiment. Professor Federson, where exactly is this pink dye being injected into the ocean and what is the purpose? Well, we did a series of three dye release experiments and we injected this pink rhodamine dye into three different locations on each experiment. So one of them was, most recently was in the mouth of the Tijuana River estuary, and another one was north, uh, closer to the Silver Strand State Beach, and another one was directly within the city limits of Imperial Beach. And what exactly do you hope to find? Well, what we want to do is this is a this is a region that has that is has impacted water quality. If it rains, it's a really bad idea to go into the water there. So what we want to do by putting in this pink rhodamine dye, which is EPA approved and FDA approved for use in drinking reservoirs. So it's safe. It's safe, yes. It's safe for humans and it's safe for the marine ecosystem. But we can we think of it as sort of like fake pollution. And what we can do then is we inject it in and we can track it. And we have a whole range of instruments to track it. We have a plane flying that can image it. We have underwater robots that are driving around uh, tracking it. We have people on jet skis that have special instruments to measure it. And so by tracking this whole plume then, we can understand how it gets transported and how it gets diluted. And you said that the water isn't great after it rains there, but what specifically are the conditions of the water in that area? How bad does it get? Well. <laughs> It can get really, really bad after after a significant rainstorm. By far the worst place in in San Diego County, and this is just due to a confluence of of, of things that are happening uh, in the border region because of uh, some cross border flows and and things like that. And how quickly do you expect to see results of this kind of testing? Well, um, we are going to be giving a series of presentations at the next big oceanographic meeting in February of next year. And um, we're going to be giving presentations down to um, the stakeholders like the city of Imperial Beach or the Tijuana River Estuary Research Reserve, um, Wild Coast, and other NGOs, and, and the Navy, which has a significant presence down there. So who came up with the idea to use this pink dye for this kind of experiment? Well, this is sort of like an evolution of a series of, 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 of studies that we've done. Um, in 2006, in Huntington Beach, we did a st we, in we threw pink dye into the water, but we only studied how it moved over a few hundred yards. And then in 2009, we did another experiment in Imperial Beach where we studied how it moved just over about half a mile, maybe almost a mile. And in this study, we're trying to understand how it moves over six to ten miles. So one of the releases we did, there was a plume that was stretched out um, 10 kilometers, which is six miles, uh, from the Imperial Beach Pier all the way up almost to Coronado. And so for these previous experiments, even though they were for um, smaller areas, yes. how, how successful were the experiments in terms of telling you, giving you information? They have been extremely successeful. So, uh, uh, so uh, they've, we've learned a lot about how how the dye dilutes um, very close to its dye source. But the way a dye dilutes very close to its dye source and the way pollution would dilute close to the source is different than how it dilutes further away from the source. So as you get further and further away from the source, different types of currents and different sorts of mixing processes uh, are, are causing the dilution. And how do you expect the results of this experiment to be used? Well, our hope is that um, that in the long-term plan is sort of in five years that we would be able to have a, uh, a numerical model, a computer model that you could look up onto a website and you could see if, there, if it had rained, how much pollution was going into the estuary or other sources and where it's going to go and if it's going to go more down to Tijuana or more towards the north and basically also be able to make predictions so that if you live in Chula Vista, for example, and you want to go to Silver Strand or you want to go to Borderfield State Park, you can, you can look up and you can see, oh, what are the water quality conditions going to be? And for what other purposes do you envision this experiment or this type of pink dye being used? Well, there's also many other, there's many other uh, things uh, where it could be used. So for example, inside the estuary, there's a number of um, crabs and snails and, and these kinds of animals that release little eggs, little larvae that get ejected out of the estuary and they get fertilized and then eventually these animals have to come back. And the same thing, the same thing happens with all these crabs and things that live inside the beach. 
So when you see birds uh, pecking into the beach, they're looking for clams and crabs and stuff. They all release, uh, they all release um, larvae that go far, far offshore, and they have to come back to the beach. And so this is not just for pollution, but it's for understanding how all sorts of types of biological properties um, make their way from the coast, offshore, and back on. Fascinating. Falk Federson, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.